everybody, welcome back to the Linux Guide. Today I'm going to talk about Nextcloud, more specifically how to install it on Ubuntu Server. This is going to be a series of a few videos telling you a little bit about how to install Nextcloud, and then I'm going to go into detail about what Nextcloud can be used for. For those of you who don't know, Nextcloud is kind of an open source Dropbox or Google Drive. However, it's actually got a lot of functionality that actually extends past the functionality of those. It's more like an online cloud, do everything you need to in one website. And you can host it yourself pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install it, and then we'll talk a little more about it from there. Right here on my screen, you see I've got a computer with Ubuntu 20.04 installed. This is a virtual machine, and I would recommend running this in a virtual machine. You don't need a graphical interface installed like I do. So long as you have SSH, you can interact with everything through the command line. Since I want to do everything demonstrated, though, from a local host perspective, I went ahead and installed the Ubuntu desktop which is GNOME on this install and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and install Nextcloud. It's pretty easy to do. sudo snap install Nextcloud and it's seriously that easy. This is going to go ahead and install not only the Nextcloud server but also the LAMP stack that goes with it and it's all self-contained in this snap. It installs pretty quickly and once it's installed you actually can go ahead and use it. Alright so we've installed Nextcloud. It's version 18.0.4 and that's the most recent version right now. One thing to note as you run updates on your computer, Snap will update and it'll keep you on the latest version of Nextcloud, which is really, really cool. So let's go check it out and get our server configured. So we've got Firefox open and we're going to go to localhost. I'll close these other tabs and go to localhost. And here we are. We're on a Nextcloud server. Let's go ahead and make our account. The Linux guy. And I'm going to say that you should leave this checked. Go ahead and install Calendar Contacts, Talk, Mail, and Only Office. Particularly that Only Office one is pretty awesome, and we'll look at that in another video in more detail. This step can also take a little while while it configures everything, but again, it's all automatic, so just sit back and relax while it does everything for you. So the initial setup is actually done now, and it's going to go ahead and install apps, so we'll wait for that to finish. You can see the current status right here. Once these are all done, we'll be able to get in our server. All right, here we are. Welcome to Nextcloud Hub. They've rebranded Nextcloud to Nextcloud Hub in version 18 because, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is more like a whole suite of software rather than just a Dropbox clone. So let's have a look at it. Let's go look through here and what it can do. Safe home for all your data, that's for sure. I'm a big Nextcloud fan and I use it for all sorts of stuff and it's all FOSS, open source software. You can see it says find more than 100 apps in Nextcloud App Store. There's all sorts of things you can do. We're just going to look at stock today, but we're going to look at apps in another video. One thing to note, there's desktop apps for Windows, Mac, and Linux. You can also get the app on Android and the App Store. I have Androids mostly right now, and I have Nextcloud installed to back up my photos instead of Google. I trust my own server much more than I do somebody else's. A couple things to note here, they do have enterprise support, which you can purchase, and they have a community to be a part of too if you get really big into Nextcloud. So let's start using Nextcloud and see what we got here. So let's start here with a PDF. Let's open one up. It's got a PDF viewer that's pretty fully featured right here in the web browser. Let's look in documents. What do we got in there? We got an ODT file. Let's open that. You see OnlyOffice is loading. OnlyOffice is actually built right into this program. So much like Google Docs, I can load something in Nextcloud in a web browser and I can edit it right here. Now I've gone ahead and made a change and I can either download or save this or print it or do like things that you normally would with a document, but there's also this save button which is grayed out. And it's grayed out because it auto saves. So I can actually go right back to my Nextcloud and I'm done editing this, just like Google Docs. I'll go ahead and open it back up for good measure to show you that my edit is in fact there. And there's my edit, which auto-saved. So this is basically a Google Docs clone. It's a full Office suite, compatible with Microsoft Office, in the cloud, hosted by you, free open source software. Nextcloud lets you do all of this and much more. So here's some pictures that come default with it. Of course, you can delete all this stuff and put your own things in here, but this is just the default, so it can show you configuration. It can show you what you can do with it. Here's a nice toucan picture, and we can cycle through the pictures here. You can even click play and view a slideshow right here from Nextcloud. It's all built in, all open source, all so free. 
It's got a photo album tab by default right here. You can see the activity that you've completed by you, by others if you're an admin. You can even integrate your email into this. You can back up your contacts here and you can use your calendar. Let's look at the calendar. So here on the calendar you see I've got new event, I've got personal, I've got new calendar. I can manage multiple calendars in one place. That's how I usually do it, but let's just make a new event to show the proof of concept. This is my event. Right there, it's in my calendar and I can manage my calendar through Nextcloud, through any web browser that's got access to this server. Another thing to note, you can use WebDAV on your phone and synchronize this calendar with your phone. So I use WebDAV and I use a calendar app called Simple Calendar, which can work with WebDAV and you can synchronize this calendar to your phone, much like Google Calendar, but again, no Google involved, totally free, totally open source. So this is the most basic functionality right out of the box. Now there's a lot more you can do with Nextcloud and we're going to look at that in later videos. Last thing I want to share with you is that I'm not running this on the most powerful hardware ever. I have four gigabytes of RAM and I have two CPU cores on this computer and it's running pretty smoothly. What this tells you is you can take like an old laptop that you don't even know what to do with and it's just been sitting gathering dust and you could convert it into a Nextcloud server. You can just plug it into an Ethernet port and let it go and you have a Nextcloud server running. Another thing to note about Nextcloud is if you're on a local network, you can access it using the IP address, which you can find on the computer using ifconfig. You may need to go into your settings and allow this IP address to be accessible, but you can access it. This will give you access to Nextcloud all along your local network. If you want to view this over the internet, however, you're going to need to use some kind of DNS, like DuckDNS, which I'll overview in another video at some point, which allows you to have a memorable name that you assign to your address. You'll also need to port forward through your router so that your server is accessible to the outside world. These are things we're going to talk about in future videos, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything coming from the Linux guy. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.